After you've taken a spectrum and converted it into a profile like we have here, and then calibrated it in angstroms, you may want to adjust it to take into account the nonlinear instrument response of your CCD. For example, many CCDs lose sensitivity as the wavelength drops below 5000. In order to compare your curves in amplitude to library curves, you have to calibrate your particular camera in the software. The steps we're going to show you are documented under this menu option also. You can print out that PDF and use it as a checklist when you're going through this process on your own. It's a straightforward process and it uses this formula here. We're going to create an instrument response curve for Vega, which is an A05 star. So in order to create the instrument response curve, we simply divide the raw spectrum from the camera by a library spectrum. Let's load a library spectrum for this particular star type. Vega is a type A05 star. So we'll come up here to the open command and select an A05 star from our reference library. Now this is a scientific grade library and it's already been calibrated for the instrument that was used to collect it. So this is what we're going to use to calibrate our camera. Now the first thing we look at here is this really has a much broader range than our camera's range so we can chop off the ends if we want to. And we'll do that by editing the points. This screen here lets us delete ranges of points. Let's see how it works. When this screen is visible the measure lines become visible. You can see them there. And we'll just put these lines on either side of a range that we want to delete. So we want to delete everything up through 4,000 angstroms. When I click the delete button, you can see they disappear. We have an undo button if we want to undo the last deletion or any number of previous deletions. Now let's delete the high end. We'll come up here to the end and maybe go up to 8500 angstroms, which is plenty for our camera's response. Now there's our library spectrum that's been cropped just for the range that we're interested in. Now the next step is to smooth this curve so that we don't have those absorption lines for the particular star that was used to create it. Well, we can drag our spline smoothing here, but you can see that at a certain point, the actual absorption lines are affecting the spline. So we want to smooth out those absorption lines so the spline is nice and smooth. And once again, we can use our delete with our measure lines just by just dragging like this around the part we want to delete and clicking delete. There's a nice shortcut here. If when I let go of my left mouse button, I'm holding the Alt key down like I am now on my keyboard, Watch here, it automatically deletes that range as if I clicked on the delete button. This makes it very fast to go through a profile like I am here, cleaning it up. Now I've zoomed in a little bit so I can get a little bit more precise. There we go. In fact, let's get this end here. and we'll delete this one absorption line here. There's no need to get too carried away with this. So now our spline is much smoother and you can see that it's fitting the curve nicely. Now this is a fine adjustment over here. By holding our mouse button down we can spin this control and do some fine tuning. And of course when I hover over the word reference you can see the curve and it's really nice and smooth. So we've now got a library spectrum that's been nicely smoothed out. So let's save it. It's the reference spectrum. We want to remember that because when I click on the Save button here, I'll be prompted which of the curves do I want to save. I'll click on Reference. Now our source file was A05, so I'm going to give it a name A05 and then a hyphen and then Smooth so that I can identify it easily when I'm trying to open it. Now that we've got a smooth library spectrum, it's time to do the math in the formula. Now here's an interesting trick to clean our screen up. I'll click on the pull down here and just reload our image and that cleans up the right side with a fresh profile just read in. So our formula calls for two spectrums. Now we just opened the raw spectrum so that's displaying now and for the library spectrum We'll select Open Reference and select that smooth library spectrum that we just created. Now let's do the math. There's a new command here that brings up a new screen. Let's take a look at it. 
math on two series. This allows us to do the math from the formula. In this case, we want to divide the main profile, which is our raw data, divide by our reference, which is our smooth library. When I click Calculate, here we can see the results of that math. Let's close the reference to make things a little more clear. So what I'm going to do now is take this particular curve and just move it over to the profile and close the window. So this is our instrument response curve that we've just calculated from the raw and library spectrums. Now we should smooth it out a little bit, so let's go up here to Edit Points and do the same spline filtering that we did earlier. And again, just getting it approximate is fine. We don't really have to delete any points at this point. It looks pretty smooth. In fact, we can hover our mouse over the label here and see that that's a nice smooth curve. That's good enough. So now let's save this. So this is our instrument response curve that allows us to calibrate raw profiles. We'll give it the name of the star type, A05, and this is an instrument response curve. So let's give it a name that identifies it that way. Now we've just skipped one step that normally in regular use you would apply before saving the curve like we just did. This area here, you want to make sure that the blue curve doesn't come down to meet the x-axis where y equals zero. We'll see the consequences of having failed to do that in just a moment. Normally you'd use the edit points command and just delete that section of the curve so it doesn't touch the x-axis. But let's go on with it this way. So that concludes the first part of the calibration process. And to review, we've created an instrument response curve by dividing a raw spectrum from our camera by a library spectrum. And we smoothed them out as we went along so that we had nice even curves. Now the second and more frequent step you'll do is to actually calibrate your profile that comes from your camera. Let's take a look at how that's done. First of all, we'll clean up, close the reference, and I'll reopen our image so that we get a nice clean profile here on the right. Now here's the formula we're going to use. To get a calibrated profile, we divide our raw spectrum from the camera by the instrument response file that we just created for this star type. So let's open that instrument response file. Now we've got the two curves, let's just do the division like the formula says. Main profile divided by the reference and we'll do our calculation, and there's our calibrated curve. And the final step is just to pull that back over onto the main screen. We'll clean things up here, and then just click Move to Profile. There it is. This curve actually reflects the spectral type of the star now. Now you'll notice the curve climbs rather steeply here over on the left, and that's because that reference curve went down very close to zero, and we'll be talking about that again in just a moment. What we can do here is just delete that portion of the profile using the tools that we've already seen. There, that looks much better. Now we can see a pretty smooth curve. Now we're going to take a brief detour before continuing with that curve. Here's the two curves that we just did a division on a moment ago to do our calibration. In red is the raw profile and in blue is the instrument calibration curve. Now notice how the blue instrument calibration curve goes down to zero at the left end. The division that we did when we were calibrating a minute ago was to divide the red curve by the blue curve. But if that blue curve gets very close to zero, the result are some very large numbers. That's why the curve, the calibrated curve, shot way up on the left end. So in the future, trim your instrument calibration curve on the left end so that it doesn't go to zero. That way, you avoid the final trim we just did. Now let's return to our video. So there we go, there's our curve. It's got a nice smooth shape to it and it reflects the spectral type of the star. And through all that processing, our absorption lines remained intact. In fact, we can compare them to a hydrogen bomber reference and we can see that they line up the way that they should. Now there's one final step. First, we'll clean things up by closing that reference series. But as a cross check, Let's load the professional reference series for this star. It's one that we used earlier in the calculations, it's A05. 
Here we can see that the shape of our curve in red matches the professional curve. This confirms that all of the math that we've done and the sequence of steps that we followed have been done properly and that we have an instrument response curve that can be used on other observations. Here's some hints to use when correcting for instrument response. First, use RSpec subtract background command to eliminate noise as signal levels approach zero. And as we just saw, crop the end of the instrument response curve to avoid zero. If possible, when you're doing that, both stars you're using should be at the same elevation to eliminate or minimize atmospheric extinction effects. And for color cameras, turn off all white balance and gamma correction. On DSLRs, use raw images. On webcams, in practice, instrument response correction is rarely successful due to complications from the cameras. Now let's go back to that instrument response corrected curve for Vega. Once you have this curve for any star type that you've observed, we can now open our reference library and determine the star's type and temperature. This is the Pickles library that's already corrected, and as you can see as I click on any item here, the curve displays over on the right. If we scroll through this list and then stop at the reference library that most closely matches our corrected curve, we will have identified approximately the type of star and thus the temperature of the star that we're looking at. You can see I'm going back here and gee, the shape of those two curves is almost the same. So now we've identified our particular star as a type A05. Now in this example, of course, we already knew that, but you could bring an unknown star to the same process. So in this video, we created an instrument response curve for Vega, but we can then use that instrument response curve on any star that we observe. So we can observe an unknown star, we correct it using that instrument response curve, and then we can use the reference library matching the two curves, and we'll know the star type and thus the star temperature. It's an amazing process.